An apparent shift over who controls the bombed out city of Bakhmut, Ukraine. The leader of the Russian mercenary group Wagner says that that militia is moving out and that would put Russia's military back on the front lines there. But Ukraine insists pockets of the mercenary group Wagner remain. CNN's Fred Plakin reports now on how this change of the guard could benefit Ukraine. Just as the Ukrainian military say their forces are retaking ground on the outskirts of Bakhmut, Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin says his mercenaries are moving out. That's it, moving out in 10 to 15 minutes, he tells these tankers. Everyone leaves before June 1st. We'll rest, prepare, and then get a new task. Wagner's exit could mark a turning point in one of the bloodiest battles in Europe since World War II. The mercenaries assaulted Bakhmut for months, often using human waves to try and storm Ukrainian positions. Prigozhin trying to prove to Putin his hired guns can get the job done where regular Russian units fail. Even during the withdrawal, a swipe at Russia's defense minister. Prigozhin joking he'll leave two scrawny fighters behind to help the army when they take over Wagner's positions. That is Bieber and that's Dolik, he says. The moment the military are in a tough position, they'll stand up and block the Ukrainian army. Guys, don't bully the military. While the Ukrainians tell CNN they cannot confirm Wagner is really pulling out of Bakhmut, they believe a withdrawal could give them a boost in Kiev's quest to retake the city. Compared to other units of the Russian army, Wagner did fight better and conducted more offensive actions, but this was literally due to bloody discipline and threats of execution. While Moscow's army struggles in Ukraine, Russians clearly feel threatened on the home front as well. The intelligence service FSB releasing dramatic footage of arrests from earlier this month of what they claim were Ukrainian intelligence operatives plotting to attack two nuclear power plants in northwestern Russia. While the Ukrainians haven't commented, Russia blames Kiev, Moscow also lashing out after U.S. intelligence assessment saying Ukraine may have been behind a drone attack on the Kremlin in early May. Behind this is the Kiev regime. We know this and we are carrying out our work based on this. Russia using the incident to justify its war against Ukraine, where Putin's top mercenary is regrouping his forces and vowing to return. And Jake, one of the things that Yevgeny Prigozhin, before pulling out, says that he did do was hand over the body of a retired uh, U.S. Uh, former Special Forces soldier who was killed in Bakhmut. CNN asked Yevgeny Prigozhin if he had done that as he had promised before. And in a post on his Telegram service, he said that, yes, he had handed over the body of retired Staff Sergeant Nicholas Maymar to the Ukrainians. And we later followed up with the Ukrainians as well. They have said that they have received the body in a casket draped in an American flag, Jake. Fred, Russia says uh, that it thwarted a Ukrainian attack on one of its reconnaissance ships. Mm -hmm. But there's new video. Is that true, what they said? Well, it, it seems as though it potentially isn't. The Ukrainians certainly have a, a very different point of view of that. And now it seems they have the video that it, it seems to back that up. And you're absolutely right. At first, the Russians had said that there was an attack with sea drones. Those are essentially unmanned surface vessels on one of their main intelligence ships in the Black Sea. And the Russians showed a video of their ship destroying one of those drones. But the Ukrainians came with a video today, which seems to show another drone moving towards that ship and coming towards the ship, potentially hitting it. We're not sure what exactly the damage is, but in that video, which is quite dramatic, you can see someone from the Russian ship firing at that sea drone, seemingly trying to stop it. And this potentially could be a big blow to the Russians because, of course, it shows, on the one hand, that their ships really aren't safe from the Ukrainians in the Black Sea, but also the ship that was hit, Jabe, is called the Ivan Horse, and it's actually one of the most modern intelligence ships that the Russians have. It only went into service in 20, uh, 2018. So that potentially in itself could be a big blow and another big blow to the Russian Navy and uh, the war against Ukraine, Jake. All right, Fred Plykin in Kiev, Ukraine. Thanks so much.